So reason here we are in Berlin and uh, keen to talk to you about your, your repair biotechnologies company. Obviously, lots going on at the moment. Um, just winding the clock back a little bit in terms of helping our audience understand the issues that you're addressing, which of course is in the field of cholesterol. So maybe could you just expand on that for us? Right, so cholesterol itself, I think most people understand that you go through life, you're supposed to have a low blood cholesterol and cholesterol is bad in the sense that if you have LDL cholesterol in your blood that's, that's raised, then you're not in a good position. But the cholesterol we're interested in is the point at which the transport of cholesterol in your body becomes disrupted either by aging or obesity and you get these localized excesses of cholesterol. Mm -hmm. Now this is actually fairly decoupled from the question of how much cholesterol is transported around in your bloodstream. That yep. doesn't have much of an influence over let's say even years, a few years on the over a lifetime maybe, but over a few years, it doesn't have that much influence on, hey, you have this lump of extra cholesterol sitting in this part of your tissue over here that is overwhelming the ability of cells to make it safe. Now, the important thing to remember is that even though cholesterol is vital to us, it makes up cell membranes, it's used for steroid production, it does a whole bunch of things. Mm -hmm. Even though it's vital, the actual raw free cholesterol is toxic. It's made safe by cells in a variety of ways. It can be esterified, it can be attached to transport particles, it can be put into the cell membrane. In all those cases, it's safe. But there's, cells have a limited capacity to deal with an excess of it. Mm -hmm. If you have too much of it in a local concentration, that, that will generate free cholesterol. And the free cholesterol, when it's inside cells, is toxic. And those cells begin to die if there's enough of it. And before that point, they will begin to become dysfunctional in many ways. So the examples of this are, are the canonical ones are atherosclerosis, where you have the localized excess in a part of your blood vessels and everything near that starts falling apart. Yeah. Um, and eventually you get a stroke or a heart attack and you die because the plaque ruptured. And the other one is the liver, which is actually the center of your cholesterol metabolism. It's where most cholesterol is created and then sent out into circulation. But fatty liver and in obesity and in aging, you just have too much cholesterol. And the liver is influential on the body in many ways. And if you have all of this cholesterol just stuck in the liver, becoming free cholesterol to some degree, free unmodified cholesterol to some degree, then you have a pathological liver. And this appears to be quite influential on a number of conditions, but that couldn't be proved until we came along with a way to actually specifically and deliberately break down and remove only the excess free cholesterol. Mm -hmm. And given that capability, suddenly we're seeing profound reversal of a number of, a number of conditions, age-related age -related and otherwise. And yeah. that's, that's the fundamental basis for our technology. So let's talk about your technology. Obviously, you're a gene therapy company as opposed to a small molecule company. So can you just explain a little bit what, what's the difference between the two? Right. So uh, there's no way we could be a small molecule company, just, and I will get to why that's the case. But um, a gene therapy is needed because the only way to get at this free cholesterol that's inside cells is to have some kind of protein machinery that goes in and dismantles it. Mm -hmm. You can't make a small molecule to go in and grab it. Well, you can. They're, they're called cyclodextrins, um, and they bind cholesterol very efficiently. But if you sent in enough cyclodextrins to the body to start taking out this excess cholesterol in parts, you'd dismantle cells, you'd be turning blood to mush, you would kill the person long before you got to the point of, of dealing with your fatty liver or right. arterial plaque. So, and additionally, cholesterol is, unlike many molecules in the body, it's not broken down locally. It's not made and broken down locally. You ingest it or it's made in the liver and then off it goes into circulation and cells take it up as they need it. And when they don't need it, they throw it back into, into circulation. Mm -hmm. um, so this is a complicated system. And like all complicated systems, it breaks down with age. But it does mean that um, because there's no destroy cholesterol function, you can't find a small molecule to manipulate that missing small, the destroy cholesterol function. So you can't small molecule your way into, into manipulating these masses of free cholesterol that isn't there and the body can't do anything with them that's, that's, that's profound and can remove it. So you need some sort of protein machinery to go in and do it inside cells. So you're, immediately you have to be making a gene therapy to supply that machinery. Mm -hmm. Now, the human body actually does contain combinations of proteins that when they act in conjunction, they will break down cholesterol. They're just not expressed in most cells. Right. So we found the best combination 
turned it into a fusion protein where you take individual proteins and you glue them together with little linkers to keep them all in the same place and, yes. and doing their thing. And then at that point, you have a technology that will work if you can get it into a cell and you just need the gene therapy platform to deliver it. So there's any number of ways you can do this. And, and it's kind of the Goldilocks problem of some of them are too hot, some of them are too cold, some of them don't last long enough, some of them last too long, and, and you're picking the least terrible way forward. And we found a very effective way forward in, in lipid nanoparticle delivery of mRNA, messenger RNA, that mm -hmm. produces a short-term effect. So it's very like a small molecule drug in the way it behaves. You inject it, it goes somewhere, it produces your fusion protein for a few days. And then it, it, go, it goes, it's gone. And the yeah. only thing it leaves behind it is the work it, the work it did to reduce the pathology. And in that, it's much more comprehensible to, to developers and investors who are used to working with small molecules. So it's the same thing. You take a small molecule drug, it goes and does something for maybe a few days at most, and then it's gone. And the only thing left behind is, is what it did. So that's kind of how it works. Um, and that's, that's the primary difference between a gene therapy company and a small molecule company is that a small molecule company generally cares a lot about optimization of their small molecule. And that's mm -hmm. the hard part. The gene therapy company cares a lot about delivery. And that is the hard part. Small molecules go everywhere. Yeah. Gene therapies have a problem in picking where to go. And we are fortunate to have a, a technology that works best when it's delivered to the liver because liver delivery is the easiest thing to do. You can just inject the drug and it goes straight to the liver. Yes. And there you go. And so, so describe for me uh, how this works on a platform basis because obviously you've got your chosen um, endpoints that you're working to at the moment, but it, are you a platform technology? Is this applicable to multiple disease areas? Indeed. So the basic, the basic principle is let's break down an excess of free cholesterol. Mm -hmm. And then the question is where are you doing this? What is the diseased tissue? And what is your delivery technology for getting that, getting that, that technology, that fusion protein into the place you want it to be. So, I mean, early on, for example, we used AAV therapies in mice to prove, to prove the principle. And there's diseases where you are interested in using AAV to permanently introduce this into tissues to correct a problem that's just going to be there forever until you do it. And there's diseases where you're not. So we can produce a whole, the whole range of quite radically different um, gene therapies delivering to different tissues to solve problems that range from, you know, neurological diseases where it's known that cholesterol metabolism is dysregulated and you see lipid laden cells with droplets of lipids inside them being dysfunctional. You can target the liver as we're doing in, a, in our initial initial work on atherosclerosis and MASH, you can target the lungs for alveolar proteinosis. You can go look at various other parts of the body where, you know, especially in obesity, where, because obesity messes everything up. Mm -hmm. And the free cholesterol is a large component of that. For example, all the cholesterol that gets stuck in the pancreas is quite likely a problem for, um, for, for diabetics uh, who are diabetic because they're overweight, because there's nowhere else for the cholesterol to go. Um, so there's the degree that we can remove cholesterol from specific parts of the body. We can address a whole range of conditions of obesity and conditions of aging that are driven to a sizable, sizable degree by this presence of like a lump of cholesterol somewhere that right. it's hard to get rid of. So, so presumably with the fact that you have this liquid nanoparticle messenger RNA technology, which obviously was, we're all familiar with that through COVID, has that helped you with your, your platform and your approach to regulatory pathways that you're now pursuing? Oh, abs absolutely. I mean, it, it, pre-COVID, it would have been very hard to do a, a lipid nanoparticle mRNA therapy because A, nobody was convinced that this was, this was a real thing. There were only a couple of groups that had gone forward with it. Post-COVID, suddenly everybody knows what a lipid nanoparticle is. Everybody knows what mRNA is. It's, yeah. it's easy to explain this to, to investors and other people. So that was a tremendous boon um, for us. So of course, better for the world had it not, had it not happened and this had taken the, the slower path, we still would have found a way. I mean, there are many, many options for, um, for, for gene therapies to take various forms that do good things. But yes, that, that whole process of, of the world becoming educated about 
this specific form of, of gene therapy has helped us immensely. Great. Well, that's, that's obviously really good to hear. So, so what is it you're actually working on at the moment? So obviously you've got MASH, you've got atherosclerosis. What is the, the rollout plan now for taking this to the next stage? So we're really interested in age-related disease primarily. And the reason we started this whole program was atherosclerosis. It, it turned out that getting to a, um, a result with, with MASH, metabolic um, dysfunction associated um, uh, state of hepatitis, that one... Um, that one worked first because it's easier to deliver things to the liver. Mm-hmm. Um, and we were very focused in atherosclerosis on, on other forms of delivery until we came around to try the liver delivery and we found that it worked really well. So we went through the MASH program. We, went, we did a pre-IND with the FDA. They said, thumbs up, this looks pretty interesting. Here's what we want from you. So it's very favorable feedback and useful, extensive feedback from the FDA. But our current focus is on atherosclerosis. Mm-hmm. And specifically, we're going to go to the clinic first for familial hypercholesterolemia because our therapy works effectively on any form of atherosclerosis. In familial hypercholesterolemia, the the people have a mutated um, LDL receptor gene, which means their liver uptake of cholesterol is de minimis to zero, and uh, they have enormous levels of blood cholesterol. Mm -hmm. Sustained over a lifetime, that produces very rapid atherosclerosis, where very rapid is die in your 30s. Right. So these folk are identifiable when young because they have deposits of cholesterol in their skin that are visible. Um, there aren't very many of them. It's a rare disease. So you can look at uh, orphan indication, fast track approval. Oh, that's interesting. And after you get that, off-label use in the severe atherosclerosis population amongst everybody else. Um, so we think this is a good path forward. We can focus on, on the rare disease, knowing that approval there really gets us to a great place for what we really want to do, which is, which is treat everybody with atherosclerosis okay. and reverse their plaque and, like, uh, and, and stop people dying. There's 10 to 20 million people every year. So that is a, that is a real problem and the current standard of care can't really do much about that problem. It reduces the toll slightly, but it can't reverse existing plaque, and it's the existing plaque that's gonna kill you. Yeah, so you're you're in the stage where you're pre-IND now, is that right, for for the work you're doing in atherosclerosis, but that's the next step. Yes, we are absolutely, we're writing the pre-IND energetically for homozygous familial hypercholesterolemia, where both, both chromosomes are mutated. And uh, then we can, we can move on from there to sign all the deals, get the GMP manufacturing done. And uh, the long pole of that leads to, to starting a clinical trial in 2026, which okay. is, of course, conditional on raising an A round uh, now and starting a Series B probably late 2025. Right. So the, your A round is open at the moment? Our A round is open in the sense that we are looking for a lead mm-hmm. and we are accepting investment investors on safe note while we, um, while we do that. So this is going fairly well. We've raised a, a fair amount of what we want to raise and we're happy to chat to people as they come forward and show interest. Yeah, great. Well, reason obviously fantastic work that you're doing as a cholesterol sufferer myself. I wish you all the best and uh, thanks for joining us today. Right, you're welcome. Thank you.